pretty much the dream gig for a lighting designer. Um, so I'm going to tell you a little bit about creating the concept behind the event, how we wanted to do the lights and everything, and then you can ask me whatever questions you want. So this village is absolutely amazing and each building is very unique. <laughs> um, so each building basically became its own design project. You know, we really wanted the overall arching vision for the project was we wanted to be bright and fun and exciting and really filled with holiday spirit. But then when it comes down to each building, it's how do we, what message do we want to convey on each building, right? They're so different. You have your very standard structural building, like uh, volunteer services or what I call the marketplace over here. And then, you know, behind you right now, you have a giant mushroom surrounded by a vine attached to a castle. So <laughs> we want to make each one feel really unique as you walk through. So you have a different experience as you walk through the whole avenue. It doesn't become repetitive. So, you know, I actually started with Town Hall, which is the biggest building, I think, on the street. So it was, you know, what traditional holiday feel do I want to convey? And that became candy canes. So that's what we made happen here. And then when it comes to more simpler building, like Marketplace, um, you know, we really wanted the, you know, your traditional color feel. But let's make it sparkle. Let's make every fifth bulb twinkle, you know. Let's still bring some excitement to that traditional feel because it's not boring. <laughs> and you can see as you walk through that they're still working on this roof right now, so that's kind of exciting to see. Um, and then behind you, the building architecture itself on this mushroom is so amazing that I didn't want to hide that in any way with the lights, so we just kind of recreated the mushroom on top of itself, so you can really see that architecture at night, which I think it pops amazingly. We saw it for the first time last night, and I almost cried, because it's, <laughs> it's crazy to see what you draw on paper, and then it just comes to life. It's, it's really humbling and amazing. Um, so as you walk down the avenue, you'll kind of see each building has a different feel. Um, these buildings are the most complete. We started over here and we're moving that way, but you'll see on Starlight Scoops, you get a nice spacey 50s vibe, which is really fun. Um, we've got our wish tree here, which is right now purple, but for the event, we'll eventually light up with twinkles representing all the wishes that this organization has granted. Um, and then when you get over to the villas, you know, it was 45 different villas working with 45 different companies with different brand identities. So each one was again its own project. And it really became, you know, how do we convey the message of the organization and what they've done for Give Kids the World? And how do we make each one different, you know, so it feels like a neighborhood, it feels like your neighbors are decorating. So I think you'll see a lot of variation down there. And, you know, we have three million lights to play with. So it's a giant playground for me, dream job. <laughs> Um, but do any of you have any questions about the creative process or the design in general? What experience do you have? What have you done? Anything like this before? Um, yes, so I've been a lighting designer for eight years and I have done a couple holiday projects in the past um, around Orlando and um, before that I was working at a theater in North Carolina. So I have a lot of theme park lighting experience which translated nicely to this village. <laughs>
each one of those weekends. As you see behind us, this is just a group of six, so if we can get many, many more of them, we can cover more of our 89 acres across the property. So once we finish setting up though, then we go into phase two, which is actually running the event. Our event will be run with 183 plus volunteers a night. So to give you an idea, over the 52 nights of the Night of the Million Lights, that's 9,500 plus shifts for us to cover. So we're really excited. We do need uh, more folks to come out and help us out with the event. So we really would encourage people, if somebody hasn't volunteered before here at the Village and they want to become involved, they can go to gktw.org forward slash volunteer and we would love to help them out. We're doing virtual orientations run by the beautiful and lovely Christine, and you'll hear her voice and mine, and we'll definitely uh, guide them on along with it. As you can probably tell, the mayor of our village, if you haven't met him before, he's decked out his Christmas finest, obviously chosen by Miss Mary, his bunny bride. He's got all the taste. It's okay. Get a brain to the operation, maybe? We'll see. She'd probably say it'd be too. <laughs> so as you can see, we set up a lo lovely socially distant setup to make sure that our friends like Mayor Clayton and Santa Claus himself could be out here at the Night of a Million Lights to greet all of our guests. We're making sure that safety is our number one priority because if it's not safe, it's not fun. So we want to make sure everyone's having a good time out here at the safety of the village. So Mayor Clayton will be set up in locations like this with his friends Murphy, Miss Mary, Sprinkles, and of course the big guy himself, Santa Claus. We'll be meeting guests under that gazebo, which will soon to be lit up, of course, in its finest. Only the best for the big man himself. Nice and distant enough that we can make sure Santa stays safe for his big trip on Christmas Eve, but of course close enough that kids can still engage and make sure he knows exactly what they want for Christmas. 